Hello, this is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. Between 9.15 p.m. on April 16, 2023 and 12.57 a.m. on April 17, Mercedes Vega, a 22-year-old female, was murdered. She was beaten, shot, and as if that wasn't enough, she was then forced to drink bleach and then burned alive. There have been no arrests made and there has been very little media coverage of this case. Mercedes lived in the Aubrey apartment complex in Tempe, Arizona at 1003 West Washington Street. On the night of April 16th at 9.15 p.m., Mercedes is seen on surveillance video heading to her car in the garage of her apartment complex. Mercedes was on her way to La Girls, a gentleman's club she worked at two or three nights a week as an exotic dancer. La Girls is located at 5151 East Washington Street in Phoenix, Arizona, and is about 1.2 miles from her apartment complex. She was going there to hang out with some friends. Mercedes never made it to La Girls. Instead, she was abducted from her parking garage after being struck in the head with a blunt object. Blood and what was described as matter was found near where her white 2019 Dodge Charger would normally be parked. Her white Dodge Charger was also taken. At around 12.30 a.m., a 911 call indicated that there was a burning vehicle on Highway 10 west of Phoenix. At 12.57 a.m. on April 17th, the burning vehicle was located, which was not Mercedes Dodge Charger. This vehicle was located around 69 miles west of Phoenix on the side of Highway 10 near mile marker 85. Mercedes' body was located in the back seat. An autopsy report described the findings. Mercedes was found in the back of a vehicle that was on fire. Gloves and bleach were discovered in the front of the vehicle and lighter fluid was discovered in the back seat. Mercedes had blunt force injuries, burn and inhalation injuries, and a gunshot wound to the right arm. Toxicology detected high carbon monoxide and a small amount of THC. Additional findings of the medical examiner are that Mercedes had thermal injuries, soot in her nostrils, a high level of carbon monoxide, and bleach odor within her larynx or throat. The medical examiner concluded that three factors were the cause of Mercedes Vega's death. Fire, which includes smoke inhalation and thermal injuries, and blunt force and ballistic injuries were all listed. A day after Mercedes' body was found in the burning vehicle, her own 2019 white Dodge Charger was located by police near Culinary Dropout on South Farmer Avenue, parked illegally. At this point, Mercedes wasn't known to be missing, and her car was actually registered to Erica Pillsbury, Mercedes' mother. This prompted police to call Erica to inform her that they had located her vehicle parked illegally. Let's talk about some of the possibilities in this case. Now, if you look at the map here, this is where the apartment complex is. This is the, the Aubrey. This is where her car was found. And the girls where she was intending on going is right there. That's also where she worked, a gentleman's club. Now the vehicle was found 69 miles west of her apartment complex near mile marker 85 as was discussed earlier and let's just show you what it looks like this is what it looks like out there it's pretty desolate but uh, that time of night there wouldn't be very many cars on the road trucks likely and uh we, maybe even very few of those as well but you can see there's not much going on out here and let's take a look at the girls gentlemen's club that is right here and as usual there's no windows it's just sort of a, a building with says the girls on it an entrance and really nothing else that's where she worked and that's where she was intending on going now if you look at this map right here it is 1.5 miles to her apartment complex. So taking a look at that, there is the apartment complex. Again, the girls right there drive this direction. And right inside this apartment complex is where 
Mercedes Vega live. It's also where we have the surveillance footage of her coming down into the parking garage. And so that's where the cars would come in and out right there. All right, so let's take a look at the location where her car was found. That's right here on Culinary Dropout. And if you look at the road here, her car was parked illegally. So I would think that maybe it was something like her car was parked right there where these vehicles aren't able to get out or, you know, something like that. It was partially covering an exit to get out on the road. But this is the location her car was found. Uh, you would think there would be a camera somewhere around here. Uh, maybe law enforcement has one. We don't know. So in a scenario where there was just one person, perhaps a killer would pull up and park their car in this general area. Then they would walk, which is only about a 20-minute walk from where the car was found to the building that Mercedes Vega lived in. Now, you would have to assume that these killers knew that she was going to be heading out that night. So the answer in who the killer is is likely in the people that she was communicating with prior to her leaving that night or somebody associated with one of those people. So the killer would walk up and walk around the gate into the parking area and wait for Mercedes Vega to come to her car. Then they hit her in the head and put her in her own vehicle and took her keys and drove her vehicle, and this would be by themselves, and drove her vehicle and then parked it back in this area and then transferred them to their car that was waiting here. Then they took that car and went somewhere in the area. You know, maybe in this area right here. I actually put a circle area that maybe the killer lives in this general area. I'm not absolutely sure. It just sort of makes sense a little bit for other scenarios as well. So they drove Mercedes and their vehicle to a house in this location and likely did stuff with her for two hours because the drive out to here is an hour and five minutes and she was found, the vehicle was found at 1257, but let's just say at 1230 when the call came in was around the time the car was set on fire. So that would make it an hour before that would be 1130. She was seen leaving her apartment complex at 915 so it only takes maybe four or five minutes to drive to where her car was found so you're there's missing about two hours and 15 minutes or so so in that scenario the the person would drive over here and for two hours or so did things to her maybe tortured her as as has been suggested and then drove um, his vehicle or her vehicle meaning it could be a female killer, out into this area and then poured bleach down her throat and set her on fire. As we know, bleach was found in the car as well as um, other items that suggest things happened right here. The, the, the beating and the shooting likely happened somewhere else. But how did this person then get home from here? That's where the question is. They would have had to get like an Uber or have a friend follow, and that would then involve another person. A friend followed, they get in that car, and then they drive back into town, and everything is already in place. Now, I think it's more likely that multiple people were involved, and they drove to the apartment complex right here and parked their car outside here. Then they walked inside, maybe two people, one hit her from behind, and then they put her into her own vehicle. And there may have even been three people here because somebody would have to try to control her while in her own vehicle and then somebody driving the vehicle. And then there's somebody that has to drive the car that was out here. And this car follows her white Dodge Charger. And then maybe it drives over to here. And at that point, there's three people to help move her really quickly into another vehicle. So that would be the vehicle that they showed up with. Then all three of them, including Mercedes, that would make four people, 
drove over and were somewhere for two hours. Then they put uh, Mercedes into a secondary vehicle. So there would be three vehicles all together. They put her into maybe a stolen vehicle and then they drive Mercedes all the way out here, one of them does, into this area, pours bleach down her throat and sets her on fire. Then that person gets into the vehicle, uh, another vehicle that followed out there and they drive back into town. That one seems more likely because it's easier to do all the different elements and everybody's aware of what they're gonna be doing prior. You know, this uh, case has some Jessica Chambers as well as Prisma Reyes vibes. I mean, Prisma Reyes went missing inside of an apartment complex where she goes into the apartment complex after parking her car illegally on a curb, sneaks through the parking area as another car leaves, she goes through the gate. And then she's seen at an elevator making various phone calls and apparently went up to another parking level and she just disappeared off the face of the earth, never to be seen again. All right, so those are some of the options. Let me know what you think is the most likely scenario and put it in the comment section, maybe a different scenario that I'm not thinking of. Now, we might also ask why, why would this be done? It seems like the person who killed her or the persons had a personal motive. The way she was killed seems like they're either trying to send a message or they were exacting the rage they felt at something. And is it somebody related to where she worked? Is it both? Like maybe she has a girlfriend uh, or a boyfriend, something like that, that she broke up with. And maybe there's an issue there, but maybe she worked with one of those people and they were part of a group of friends that knew what time she was going to be leaving her apartment. We do know that the criminal element of society does tend to hang out at strip clubs or gentlemen's clubs, as you, wh whatever you want to call them. So is there somebody in there that was stalking her? But if this person was stalking her, I don't know if they would have known exactly when she was leaving. This would have to be somebody she knows. I think the answer in this case might very well be in connection to the people that she communicated with prior to heading out that night because they were aware of what time she was going to be leaving. And by saying that, I mean it could be somebody related to one of the people that she was communicating with, not necessarily the people she was communicating with directly. All right, so again, put your thoughts in the comment section and let me know what you think. The next section of this video will be basic victimology. Erica Pillsbury, Mercedes Vega's mother, will describe Mercedes as the person she really was. Who was Mercedes Vega? In communications with Erica Pillsbury, she described her daughter by first addressing what society would describe as the elephant in the room, and then tells us a little bit about who Mercedes Vega really was. In the words of Erica Pillsbury, My daughter was a dancer. Yes, that's right. She worked two or three nights a week at a gentleman's club in Phoenix called La Girls. She started just after she turned 18. That's right. She worked in the sex industry. That's right. She was a stripper. My beautiful, 5 foot 10 inch tall baby with perfect teeth and flawless skin, long dark hair and flexibility of a gymnast, spent a few evenings a week making hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars a night. I know as soon as you read that, you assume things about her. Let me attempt to change your perception of this young woman and perhaps others who choose to earn money in this industry. Don't get me wrong, she wasn't perfect, but she was loved deeply and she was cared for wholeheartedly by her entire family. When I was pregnant with her, I knew it would be her and I against the world. After everything I had experienced as a child and feeling stifled most of my life, my mission was to always encourage her to be herself, but also to never break her spirit. I wanted her to feel comfortable expressing her feelings and to experience life without feeling like she had to be 
who anyone else wanted her to be. The beginning of Mercedes' life was not simple. She was not born into an idyllic environment. I was going through a nasty divorce, working full-time, attending college at the University of Alaska, majoring in criminal justice, and taking care of my two beautiful older daughters and breastfeeding a newborn. Jessica was eight when Mercedes came into our lives. Alexis was four. We lived in a two-story, two-bedroom condo in Anchorage, Alaska. Mercedes came into the world in six short minutes. I barely made it to the hospital, emerging onto this earth still in her bag of waters. Weighing only five pounds, three ounces, she was perfect, absolutely gorgeous. She was loved. She was smart. She got great grades. She cried if she didn't get an A. Wanted to be a microbiologist. She was a great swimmer. She played the violin. She could cook. She rode horses. She volunteered at church. She prayed every night. She was very spiritual. She defended people who were unable to defend themselves. She was so empathetic, she could read minds. She encouraged everyone around her to be the best self. She didn't drink. She didn't do drugs. She was concerned about what she put in her body. She liked nice things. She wanted to be a mom. She worked out six days a week. She ordered from HelloFresh. She loved babies. She was left-handed. She played volleyball. She could sing. She was a terrible driver. She loved expensive things. She could be judgy. She was messy. She loved Disney and she loved Hawaii. Victimology and the why something happened is very important in cases, but the focus should be on finding the barbaric killers, not what someone chooses to do for a living. Please help spread the word in Mercedes' case by sharing and liking this video. And if you would please subscribe and hit that notification bell, that would be great. Mercedes Vega, a 22-year-old living in Tempe, Arizona, was beaten, shot, forced to drink bleach, and then burned alive. Nobody deserves that. Let's spread the word. If you have any information regarding the savage murder of Mercedes Vega, please contact the silent witness, which is posted in my community section, or text anonymously to 480-948-6377. Thank you very much for watching, and as I always say everybody, until next time, be safe out there.